Hello. Hello. I think we are live. We'll uh, we'll just wait a couple minutes to see uh, to get a few more people on board. Give us a, a wave or a g'day or a hello or a welcome wherever you are from. <laughs> yeah, let us know where you're from in the comments. We're just also going live on Instagram too. Yeah. So we're just quickly, you know, sort out some tech issues if there's any. Before we get started. But yeah, if you have joined and you can hear us, uh, just let us know in the comments. That would be fantastic. And then we'll hopefully get started in the next couple of minutes or so. We are very excited, that is for sure. <laughs> Bit of nervous energy, but we're it's ready. early here as well. So early. It's 5 a.m., so we're a little bit. We are. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. From Alejandro. Hello. Alejandro, good morning to you. <laughs> What time is it where you are? Must be the morning because he said good morning. <laughs> I would imagine. Are we live on Instagram, Cam? I don't think so. All right, we're working it out. We'll just give it a couple minutes, guys, and then we'll, we'll get into it. Twelve PM. Twelve PM. Oh, it's morning. No, it's still morning. You, probably, <laughs> you might have just woken up. I hope you've got a coffee. I hope everyone that's joining us today is going to be having a coffee with us. We are live on Instagram, guys. Alrighty. Sweet. Okay, so we're live on YouTube, live on Instagram. We'll wait for a couple of people to come through. Yeah, we'll yeah. just give it another thirty seconds or a minute, I think, and then we can go on both platforms, and then we'll uh, we'll give the people what they want. We'll give them a bit of a show. Hey. Give them what they're here for. That, what they're here for. Yeah. And they're here to learn how to brew better coffee at home. Cam's just penning some comments as well. Bear with us two seconds, sorry, folks. Awesome team. We've got 44 people, 46 people joined so far. All right. So I think you're saying hi this morning. Beautiful. Let us know where you're from, guys, if you're joining us from Instagram. Also, Everyone on Instagram, guys, if you are viewing, uh, feel free to also jump across to the YouTube platform uh, if you're after a better angle. Uh, the link will be in the link tree through Instagram, uh, so feel free to jump on either one of those. Um, you might find a wider angle. All right, I think we might get started, hey? I think everyone's ready to brew coffee and we're ready to taste coffee. Sure. All righty. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so, so much for joining us. We are super excited to be here this morning. As Felicity just said, it's freaking early here. It's 5 a.m. Um, Australian time. Well, I'm just going to interrupt. We've got some people from Venezuela, India, Slovenia this morning. Amazing. G'day to everybody across the world. Hello. Thanks so much for joining. As I said, it's 5 o'clock in the morning here. Uh, we're excited to be brewing some coffee for you this morning, a part of the Global Coffee Festival. Obviously, this year, due to COVID, we couldn't all be together tasting coffee, listening to these amazing talks in real life. But Allegra Events have done such an amazing concept of making a global festival virtual, which makes it super exciting for us to join from all the way in Brisbane, Australia, even if it's five o'clock in the morning. It's the perfect time for coffee. We've been up for a few hours. I've already had a couple under my belt and yep. we're ready to get going. <laughs> my name's Alex. I'm Felicity. And behind the camera, you've got this little hand. We've got Cam as well. We Thank are us. the Barista Mentor team. We're a Brisbane-based company, very small just the three of us, yep. and we have an invigorating passion for coffee. And we want to share our knowledge for coffee, um, community, and everything that we can into you guys, for coffee newbies, coffee lovers, for everybody who want to learn more coffee and essentially brew a better cup at home. We are trying to do this, and we hope to be doing this and continue to do this uh, through our platforms of Instagram, YouTube, and obviously our website as well, through free, educational, and ideally engaging and entertaining content. So I really hope that you guys can join us along on our incredible journey forever and ever and ever. Feel free to not as well. <laughs> That's totally your choice. So guys, you've obviously joined this workshop because you want to learn how to brew better coffee at home. I'll be hosting majority of the workshop. Um, Felicity will also be here to uh, stream the comments. Mm -hmm. You want to let the, the guys know what you'll be doing? Yeah, so I'll be kind of in charge of the comments section. So if you have any comments or you want to know what's going on or anything, just pop in the comments. We'll try and answer it throughout the 
throughout the time. So. And likewise with Instagrams, guys, uh, Instagrams, we've only got one Instagram. Uh, Cam will also be monitoring questions and yeah. things like that. So please feel free to ask us any questions and we'll try our best to get back to them throughout the, the hour yeah. workshop. So the way the workshop's going to run, we're going to be talking about a few different brewing methods. We're going to be talking about the V60, the AeroPress, um, a French press, um, and also cold brew coffee too. Now, I've chosen these methods purely because I think that they're the most accessible and probably the most common um, when brewing coffee at home. Now, we also want to discuss a couple of the pain points that you might be experiencing at home. We want to talk about certain variables that you might be able to control in your home as well. Now, those uh, variables are obviously prominent in all brewing methods. Now, some are more prominent than others in, in different brewing methods. And what I mean by that uh, and the variables are grind size slash brew time, temperature of water, speaking of water, would you mind? Thank you. Uh, water, uh, agitation, so how much we stir, swell, or uh, move our coffee around whilst in water. Um, also water quality and, of course, Coffee quality. <laughs> There's the one of the, the couple biggest things, obviously, water and coffee quality, which we will get to throughout the workshop. So, like I said, we're going to touch base on all of these variables within certain brewing methods that we will take you through and how to control some of those at home. I want to be able to share with you if you if your coffee's too bitter, what to do. If it's too thin or sour, what to do as well. Likewise, uh, with uh, different brewing methods and things like that. So I reckon we're probably going to get into it straight away this morning. Um, but before we get started, I want to let you know the most incredible coffee that we'll be brewing this morning. So we are so, so lucky to be sponsored by Semi Pro this morning. Uh, our good friends, uh, thank you to Tim, James and Jason over at Semi Pro. They are based here in Brisbane and they roast some banging coffees. We were so excited uh, when, we got so, when we got chosen to do a fringe event. We uh, reached straight out to them and we asked for something very special, and of course they've delivered. Today, we will be brewing a uh, carbonic maceration honey process from El Salvador, which I must say is probably one of the best coffees that I've ever tried in my life. If you wanna give a bit of a close up on the can there. Um, it is absolutely mind blowing. I, I showed this to Cam and Felicity, um, as they're quite new to the specialty coffee world as well, I've spent quite some time in it, and. I knew that it would be the coffee that would stay in their mind for the rest of their lives. Now, I know probably some of you are thinking, God, who is this Alex guy? He's a nutter. But I swear, this is probably one of the best coffees that I've ever had in my entire life. It is oozing with flavor. Think lint dark chocolate, 80%, raspberries. Don't know why I said raspberries <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm just like, excited. I'm appealing to the global audience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, plum, you know, black apricot. Just absolutely delicious. Um, good thing, though, for you guys, if you do want to try it, we have a limited sale only this weekend. We've only got 100 bags. It was that rare. Uh, that's all we could get our hands on. That's all semi-pro could get their hands on. So uh, if you do want uh, to taste along with us or taste some of the recipes that we've tried, make sure you follow the links in the descriptions. Uh, in Instagram, it's in the link tree as well. Uh, you can find the coffee on our website and it's limited time only, 100 bags, and they're going to be selling quick. So make sure you get amongst those and get ready. All right. I think we're going to start brewing. I think you guys probably heard me waffle on enough, I think. Uh, so I think we'll probably start with the V60, hey? Yeah. Sounds good. You might flip in there. All right. So, V60. I'm sure, give us a quick wave if everyone's brewed a V60 before or loves V60. Thumbs up. Lots of love hearts going around, I'm sure. We actually had uh, Kay Cabana put in a message, a question here saying, what's your favourite brewing method, Alex? My favourite brewing method is actually V60, so you guys are actually in for a treat. Uh, the reason I love V60 is because I find it super clean, uh, super balanced, uh, well-rounded every single time I brew it. Um, I'm not actually going to eat these. Do you think we're getting excited about the coffee over here? Amazing. Carbonic maceration. Yeah. And the raspberry flavors. Great. I'll elaborate a little bit further on the carbonic maceration shortly. I just want to get the V60 on the go for you guys. So a couple things about the V60 itself. Obviously, it's got ridges on the inside. Now, I'm sure you guys can see that across there and over at IG as well. And we want to know the reason why we've got these ridges. 
So a couple of reasons. They help and support water flow when we're pouring from our kettle into our V60, making sure that we can have consistent water flow that then helps have an even and consistent extraction. Now, this also helps the filter paper stick. Uh, so your filter paper is not going to cave in, you're going to choke or flood your coffee, uh, which is going to result in an unappealing and undelicious brew, of course. Uh, there's also one exit hole. So this means that there's only one place for the water or the coffee to go. Now, I find personally, it's my personal opinion, uh, that I get a nice cleaner and a neat, more even extraction because the water can only go to one place. Now, I'm not saying that different brewers with multiple holes are bad. By all means, you can still get a very even coffee out of that. I would just personally say for beginners and for newbies, it's easier with a V60 because you can only pour the water to one section. And if you, you know, when you focus on your pour, which will give you some technique tips shortly, it's only going to the one point of exit. Now, we will start with our recipe. So here at Barista Mentor, we always work to a base ratio of about 60 grams of coffee to one litre of water. Now, as I said, it's five o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to brew a little bit of a bigger batch because I would <laughs> like some of this delicious, juicy boy. I'd like some And yeah. we all would too. So I'm going to brew up 500 mils. Um, so I'm going to actually start with 32 grams coffee ground. Now, as I said, uh, the 60 grams to one litre is a base ratio. Obviously, tweak your recipe. That is the most exciting thing about coffee. There are so many different variables. There are so many different things that you can do with coffee. So, you know, make sure you play with your recipe, play with different doses, play with different grind sizes until you get the flavor that you really like. These are some of the tips that we like to get delicious coffee every time. So, first thing I'm gonna do, um, water has just come off the boil. I'm just gonna pre-rinse my filter paper. Two things here, yeah? Jeez, that sounds like Jamie Oliver then. <laughs> Two things, yeah. <laughs> First thing, I'm rinsing the filter paper to get rid of any of the uh, uh, papery taste that might be still on the filter paper. But most importantly, I'm actually preheating my server and preheating my V60. As you guys may or may not know, in coffee, water temperature is super important to have consistency. Okie dokie. I'm gonna add my coffee. We've literally just ground this. For workflow reasons, we've ground this five minutes just before the workshop, so the coffee's still fresh. Excuse me, folks. My recommendation, grind fresh every single day, every single brew. That's how you're going to get a tasty coffee, okay? All right. So I'm just going to add my 32 grams of coffee into the center of my V60. And I'm just going to tap this so I get a nice flat bottom. Like so. Notice as well that it's not all up around the sides. You want to make sure that it's in the center of the V60. You got a good shot of that, Cam? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. In the center of the V60. Nice and clean. I'm going to tear my scales and I'm going to start the bloom process. I'm going to start my timer and take this up to 80 grams of water. I like a bit of a bigger bloom. Now, what is a bloom? A bloom is where the CO2 process, uh, sorry, the CO2 is coming off the coffee from the post-roast process, interacting with the water and the oxygen in the air as well. You're gonna let that drip through for about 30 to 35 seconds. You'll see that it starts to bubble. This is the CO2 interact chemical reaction. Now, after that happens, I'm gonna do a slow, consistent, steady pour, slow circular motions, bringing that up directly to my beverage weight total. Notice slow, consistent, almost circles, and then a zigzag. The reason I'm doing that is because I don't want to create a whirlpool. Now, when we were talking about variables, obviously the two biggest variables in a V60 will be grind size and agitation. The agitation is where I'm zigzagging and I'm circling my coffee. So I want to find a balance. Too much agitation, my coffee is going to be over extracted, which means it will be bitter, unpleasant, and under extracted will be sour, thin, and astringent. So just finding a healthy balance. The reason I do this all in one pour is because I actually found and developed this technique whilst working in busy cafes. I was finding that it was very difficult for me to have a barista disappear to make a V60 for seven minutes for one customer while we still had espressos to make. So we developed this technique to make sure we could give a clean, 
consistent, most importantly, delicious and timely V60 every single time. Now, I think that this method's actually super, uh, uh, what's the word? Well, not volatile, I've lost the word. It's super, you can use it in the house, it's versatile. I wanted to sound like a bit more like, it's five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> versatile, it's super versatile, like you can use it anywhere. It's such a great recipe. And we've also got a more in depth version as well on our YouTube channel as well. Yeah. We do, uh, which will all be in the links uh, in our descriptions. Um, obviously, if you're on YouTube, you can just go directly to our channel. Uh, so if you guys do enjoy some of the content we do, it would really mean a lot if you give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. Um, and last nice to Instagram. And if you are on Instagram, uh, you know, let us know your, um, sorry, you can find our YouTube through the link tree. I think we've got a question from Instagram. Yeah, we've got a few questions coming through. Uh, first of all, Kay Cabana has just said again on that kettle. Um, I love that kettle. Do you want to just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah sure. Right. So, yeah, sure. <laughs> this is a fellow oak kettle. Um, so a few reasons we use this kettle, um, which I was just about to explain. So thank you so much for, for cueing me and prompting me. Um, we have a few different features. So it's got a gooseneck restrictor pour. Now, the reason we have that is so that water flow can be controlled. On a normal kettle, uh, we've just got one open vessel or one open hole where you basically would pour the water, water gushes out. The restrictor pour helps uh, the amount of water flow, which helps with our brews, makes it more even um, uh, and cleaner and consistent to extract. Now, this kettle also has the ability, oh, the extra features of the handle. So like the handle is super easy to grab. It's also like a uh, centered balance. So it doesn't matter how full or how empty the kettle is, you'll have even and consistent pours. Uh, my favorite thing as well, it's actually got a temperature gauge on the top too. So I know where I'm brewing. Uh, if you guys are interested in certain products, then of course uh, head straight to our website where we sell all of these things as well. Oh, we've probably got one more question and then I think I need to yeah. crack, crack on. Um, does a continuous pour have effect over grind size should i grind coarser this from chef and coffee yeah good good question man um, um i would probably grind slightly coarser i've on this brew in particular uh, i don't have any grinds left unfortunately but i have gone a bit more of a medium to coarse grind size um my ideal brew time on that brew was about uh it finished dripping at three minutes which is exactly where i personally wanted it uh, so I would say like slightly coarser, especially for a, a bigger brew as well. And just on that, Chef and Coffee also said before, um, he uses a Kino M47 Classic Grinder, fantastic. Uh, set at 3.4.1 and the brew time's three minutes, but he thinks he should aim for about 3.30. Yeah, beautiful, man. Like I said, that's the beautiful thing about coffee. You know, if you like a bit more body, grind a little bit finer, you get a bit more out of it. It might have a slower drip time. You could also try pouring a little bit slower or agitating your coffee a little bit more, um, and you might extract some of those flavors as well. So as I said, we were focusing on agitation and grind size for that one. Uh, we were using a set of scales to track and weigh our brew, which is absolutely imperative. You can't brew great coffee at home without a scale, unfortunately. Now, you don't have to have the fanciest of the fancy, fancy, fancy man scales, <laughs> all right? Lucky enough, I have one of the fancy man scales. Uh, I'm now broke. I'm just kidding. Um, but if you just buy, like, a set of kitchen scales, that's also fine. Um, but to time your brew, just use your mobile telecommunicator on the side there as well uh, so we can track that brew. Um, server as well, not 100% imperative to the brew. Uh, however, you can just brew into like a cup, a mug, but uh, servers are great for, ser uh, for sharing, of course, and to serve out of. You can get a range of different thermals uh, to keep the coffee hotter for longer. Uh, these glass ones are great. Like I said, uh, you can find them all on our website as well. Plug that one in and I'll leave that there to charge. Uh, medium to coarse grind, two and a half to three minutes. I think we're probably ready to taste this bad boy. Can't wait. How good does it smell? It does smell so good. Already, I can smell like the cream de cacao. The cream de cacao. Cream de cacao. That's a mouthful. It's which is, it is a mouthful. <laughs> Let me get a cheeky little mug in. Yeah, of course, mate. Guys, this is smelling so vibrant, so juicy. This is a carbonic maceration honey process, which is extremely interesting. So it's actually a technique that they previously used in winemaking. So carbonic maceration essentially means to ferment, right? So you would take your coffee cherries. It's a honey process. So they've peeled some of the outer cherry or pulp up and they put it into drums or tins and they've sealed them. So no oxygen can come in and no oxygen can come out. 
And that's what helps develop these flavors deeper and deeper and deeper. And that's why we've got such complexity and uh, richness. So on the nose, raspberry, oh, peach. <sighs> Holy shit. Yeah, I don't amazing. know if I can say shit, but <laughs> that is just like that real. That is Shoot amazing. straight up your tongue, 80% lint dark chocolate. Mm. Raspberries down the side of the tongue, and then almost like an umami flavor across it. Yeah, yeah, I like I said, guys, I honestly cannot believe how good this coffee is. We've only got a hundred bags of it. It's up to you. What more can I say? Links in yeah. the description. Yeah, I don't need to sell that to you because that the proof's in the bloody pudding. <laughs> That's what we say in Australia. Um, I've just got a question about shipping. So, um, mm -hmm. do you? Sh Ship to India? Yeah, we, we do ship internationally. On our website, you can also see a bit of a breakdown with shipping times um, mm -hmm. with the coffee. If you guys are to order it, we will be roasting, or Semi Pro will be roasting early next week, and we will try and ship ASAP, obviously, due to COVID. Uh, well, it will depend on your countries. Yeah. But on our website, we do have a guide of how many business days it will be taking uh, to get yeah. there. So Which you guys could taste this with us this morning. Yeah, it's it incredible. It's on another level. <laughs> I'm just gonna have a little bit more. Thanks, Semi Pro. Thank you very much, guys. It's almost got like like raspberry lemonade and like sparkly. Mm. Like it's almost a bit yeah. bubbly. Yeah. And then that chocolate is straight down the middle. Mm. Yeah. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna set this aside. Um, I'm gonna keep coming back to it. My favorite thing about filter coffee is uh, as filter coffee obviously cools down, uh, the sweetness opens up a lot more and the flavor profile has completely changed. Mm. So we'll, we'll keep coming back to this throughout the brew. Uh, sorry, throughout the workshop for you guys to try. Okie dokie, artichokes. We will move on to the AeroPress now. AeroPress is very interesting. I always find how interesting, like how popular AeroPress is. I would say like internationally, like everybody that I talk to, AeroPress is probably like the most common brewing method, which is pretty interesting to me. I probably only got introduced to AeroPress a couple of years ago and, and wouldn't brew it as often. I think it's still delicious. I take it, like if I go away on holidays, not that we can holiday at the moment anyway, but if I go away camping or anything, I definitely take an AeroPress with me. Um, they're fantastic brewers for on the go. Uh, they're delicious. The interesting thing, obviously, they're an immersion brew, so you do get like a super full body um, and flavorful brew out of it, um, which I'm excited to share with you, especially with this coffee today. I might just keep my cup over here as well. Um, we will be showing you the inverted method today. We also have a more in-depth video on our YouTube channel as well if you guys are interested in watching. But I'll share a couple of quick tips with you this morning slash evening, wherever you are in the world. So uh, to begin, water boiled, obviously. Now, brewing filter coffee, uh, ideal brewing temperature can be anywhere between 92 and 96 degrees. Now, this always isn't necessarily true. I kind of go the hotter, the better. You're not going to burn the coffee. Now, this is quite a controversial opinion. Now, have what you may. This is my opinion. Roast me if you dare. <laughs> Please don't. I'm very sensitive. Um, <laughs> but right, coffee is roasted at 220, 220 degrees Celsius, right? So pouring 99 degree water on it probably isn't going to hurt the coffee. Now, what would hurt the coffee is bad water quality, which we'll get to in the French press video shortly. And once you do take water off the boil and you add your water to your brewer with the coffee sitting in there, I bet you if you measure that slurry, it's not sitting at 99 degrees. Try it. Let us know your thoughts. Now, enough of the controversy. Let's just make some <laughs> coffee, I think. <laughs> so we've got the AeroPress itself. Mine's a bit old and tattered, which is great. means it's definitely had a great life. Uh, we've got the filter cap um, and then also the filter papers itself. Now, little tip, um, if I can pick up the filter paper. <laughs> little tip, I actually like to brew with two filter papers. Now, the reason I do that is because my personal favorite brewing method, as uh, mentioned before, is the V60. I like how clean and sweet I get my coffee. The good thing about the AeroPress is I get a lot more body. It's a lot more intense, but I want a bit more clarity in it. So I double filter it so I don't get any of that excess sediment coming through the brew. Give it a go. Try it out. Uh, some might say it's a bit wasteful, but I honestly do find I do get a little bit of a cleaner taste, and that's just a personal preference. So first thing I'm going to do, guys, is place both of my filter papers inside my filter cap. And actually, do you mind if I take this cup? 
on the shotgun. So, you know, I had your coffee in it. It's all right. It's playing more coming. <laughs> <laughs> we are very lucky to have coffee on tap, essentially. I'm just going to pre-rinse that filter paper. Same thing. Getting rid of any of the papery taste. And then I'm also just going to quickly add a bit of water in here to preheat this and give it a swirl. We have uh, someone from El Salvador tuning in this morning. Oh, amazing. So the beans are the best from here. They definitely are. I've tasted some incredible coffees. So this is from the Los Pirinos um, region and from Gilberto Bar uh, Barauna, sorry, terrible pronunciation, from Lot PS4. So if you're joining us from El Salvador and you've, if you know that, that would be absolutely incredible. We love this coffee and big shout out to the guys at El Salvador. Okay, so I've teared my scales, water is ready to go. I'm going to add my uh, ground coffee. Now, this one I'm going um, medium to coarse as well. You might be able to see, I uh, don't have the best distribution on that one, to be honest. Um, I'm not going to go too close on that. <laughs> um, reason I've done that is because I like a, a, coarser, a coarser grind because I want to get more sweetness out of it. Uh, the interesting thing about AeroPress is there are so many different recipes out there. Mm -hmm. You could grind fine and make more of an espresso and uh, water it down to like a long black slash Americano, or you could go super coarse and do like a cupping. It's so different. Uh, let us know your recipes in there. Yeah, in the comments, let us know your recipes. It's cool to always share them around, um, give others inspiration. Some, you know, sometimes you might try it. It might not work for you, but try someone else's recipe, see if that that works and same with all all the methods we're doing today Definitely. um yeah give share some inspiration to think about. yeah let us know like we'd even be interested to try out some of your recipes and probably even make it um into a, a video later on yeah all right we'll get started okay so we've teared the scales the coffee's in i'm going to quickly take this up straight to its beverage weight of 250 grams i'm going to start my timer just going to give this a bit of a swirl on the way up as well just to make sure I'm coating all of my coffee grounds and I'm just pouring in a circular motion. Now, variables that we're looking at today is obviously grind size because we're steeping. We're going to steep this to a further 1 minute 15 in total. Now, this is quite a fresh coffee, so it's going to build quite a little bit of a crust. So I'm just going to stir that straight away. Back of the spoon, a few stirs, about 10 stirs or so, right down the bottom. I know that the AeroPress actually comes with um, a stirrer and a spoon, but I lost mine, so I just use a spoon now. <laughs> so like I said, I'm going to take that up to 1 minute 15, taking my filter cap, placing it on the top of the press, and I'm just going to give it a little squeeze, not damaging my scale, because it's a fancy man scale. It says maximum, so I'm not going to push it anymore. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm just making sure that there's no oxygen trapped in that chamber. So I'm actually just going to take that off because I don't need the scale anymore. Just like so. So we're going to steep that to 1 minute 15. It's all happening very quickly. So I'm going to flip this press over like so and a slow downward press. Now this should take about 30 to 45 seconds depending on your grind size. Now the important thing to remember is let gravity do the work. We don't want to be forcing this press through because we don't want to pressurize this chamber and enhance the extraction any more than it already has. If you press and it's taking too long, you might have grown too fine. And if it just is pushing through very easily, probably too coarse. Now, we're going to push through until we hear the hissing noise. When we hear that hiss, three, two, one. I don't know if people could hear that, but I definitely heard it. You hear it? Yeah, I heard it. I'm going to stop pushing. <laughs> I don't want to push through that hiss because I don't want to push any more coffee through my filter paper. I don't want to push any sediment through. I just want to leave it the way it is now. Yeah. Now, that is done. You can take this filter cap off if, if you like. It's my favorite part. Like I said, this does nothing for <laughs> the brew, but it's super satisfying. And then you've got this nice, luscious puck in all of its glory. Um, so the coffee's now brewed. Like I said, that is quite a quick brew. Gonna give this a bit of a stir. We've only stirred it a few times, so we've only agitated a little bit. It's gonna be very nice, I think. 
So you go on 18 grams on this recipe, so a little bit more, so a little bit more body coming through, and we've poured uh, about 200 and 250 out, just under. Already I can get way more chocolates through there. What sweetness coming through as well, actually. Mm. You want to smell this, Ken? Mm. Super not, complex. I smell chocolate. Mmm. All right. Let's get rid of that one. These two freshies. We had some people that heard the hiss. We got the hiss. Yes. We got some people that heard the hiss. Yes. <laughs> so, guys, a couple tips on the AeroPress and a couple things to keep in mind and to try as well. So, if you're finding, Ken, would you like? Oh, I would love some. If you are finding that your AeroPress is a super bitter, I know when I first started making AeroPress, my coffees were really bitter, mm. very astringent. Um, I just thought I couldn't get a good cup out of an AeroPress. But what I did realize was I was grinding way too fine. I was agitating for too long, uh, too much, sorry. So that means I was stirring it. I was like beating it. It was like I was whipping meringues, like making meringues. And uh, I was also steeping it for like two and a half, three minutes for some absurd reason. And I was just finding it was super bitter. And I just was like, AeroPress isn't for me. Mm. But, you know, I learned a few tips, grinded a little bit coarser and uh, steeped for a little bit less as well and pressed earlier and I started to be getting some amazing results yeah. lately and this is starting to become one of my next favourite yeah. brewing methods, I would definitely say. Yeah. So try coarser grind, steep it for less, or if you're getting the other flavours, try a finer grind um, and steep it for a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Shall we try this coffee? Let's do it. All righty. Far out. How different is that though? Mm. It's crazy how, how the different notes are brought out mm. depending on the method you use. Like that tastes so different. So, so Still different. amazing, but just different. Good different, that is. That's good, good different. <laughs> so this one to me, like straight away, the acidity is so mm. balanced, but it's juicy and it's like ripe. I feel like I'm eating like fresh yeah. fruit from the tree all around the side of my palate, my palate, some might even say, um, and it's bloody good. What do you think, Cam? I think it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. I think people should pick it up. Yeah. Once in a lifetime. I'm just going to quickly go back to the V60 that I made before and taste that one now too. Oh, my God. <laughs> taste that. It's just like sparkly. It's like bubbly raspberry, raspberry jam almost. Yeah. So delicious. Like I said, guys, get amongst this coffee if you can. It is absolutely mind-blowing. This carbonic maceration honey process is something that is absolutely to die for. We only got 100 bags. Uh, I know a couple of people are already uh, looking at it, looking to purchase it. So make sure you do get your hands on it before it runs out. I want to make sure we can share this with as many people as, as possible. We also will do a follow-up after this video. Um, just looking at Cam because I've gone off the off the script now. He looks a little bit surprised. I said we're going to do a follow up video uh, just with some of the recipes that we've done today. So you know, if you guys do purchase the specific coffee, we'll give you uh, exclusive content to that. We've just got a quick question. Um, Kate Van has just said, is this the same beans that you use for the V60 with the AeroPress? Yeah, we're using the same coffee for um, the entire uh, workshop because I want to taste it. Uh, the same coffee in different brewing methods and how we can bring the different flavors out of different of the same coffee through different processes as you can see that coffee starting to kick in I'm, I'm i'm awake now we're bouncing around aren't sun's, we? up, yeah. sun's up which is fantastic okie dokie um so yeah like i said guys 100 bags make sure you do get amongst it it is absolutely mind-blowing even listen to the guy from el salvador he knows this is where the best coffees come from i honestly think it's one of uh, the best coffees i've ever tried in my life okie doke um so next up we have uh, probably one of the most common brewing methods, I would say. I'm pretty sure everyone in their house has it. Their mum has it or maybe their grandmother has it uh, or their dad. Or absolutely anybody, I'm sure. Most people have one of these sitting in their house. Now, this is called the French Press, French Press, Cafetiere, Plunger, Pushy Thingy, many different names really. Coffee Steep Pot, Grandma's Coffee Mug. <laughs> no one knows what it's called usually called the plunger, but yeah. <laughs> I would say it's probably one of the most common brewing methods at home. Before I ever got into specialty coffee, uh, my mum had one of these, and I just remember the sludge that she would drink from it, mm -hmm. and it made me sick. I just thought, how could anyone enjoy coffee yeah. when you're drinking like a mudslide mocha? <laughs> That's basically what it it's was. A very, very good explanation of what yeah. <laughs> Then I got into the world of specialty coffee and started exploring with different brewing methods, and I thought to myself, why... 
does this one have to be so shit? Mm. I said shit again. <laughs> Why? Why does it? Let's make it good. And I know there's a few coffee professionals out there that have made fantastic videos on it as well mm. and how to make uh, better coffee with a French press. So here are a couple of our tips. Um, I'd love for you guys to try them out as well. I think this is such a versatile piece of kit. Uh, take it anywhere as well. Yeah. Take it on holidays. It's a staple. You don't need a fancy kettle. You don't really need a set of scales. Mm. Measuring jug, obviously, instead. Um, so, yeah, I would say it, it, it's good. You can make great coffee out of it, and it's super convenient as well. Perks of it, it's a full immersion brew, so you're going to get a super flavorful, packed body. You're going to get some of those sweetness aromas coming through as well. Now, the thing I always unfortunately find is that I do always get a bit of sediment or a bit of coffee grind floating around in my cup. Now, a couple of the tips that we're going to show you guys is hopefully going to avoid some of that. We're going to steer clear of getting sediment in our cup and make sure that we can try and get the cleanest brew as possible. Um, the biggest variables that we'd probably focus on this, uh, along with most coffees, as I said, all variables are prominent, is grind size because we're steeping and we're immersing this brew for up to three minutes. So we want to make sure the grind size is spot on and agitation as well. But what we're going to touch on basically while this steeps is water, water quality um, and keeping that uh, up to scratch. So first thing we're going to do, just start off just like every other brewing method, we're just going to preheat. Can you have a set of cups for us? Okay. Lovely. So we're just going to give that a bit of a preheat, a bit of a swirl. We are grinding our coffee course because we're going to steep this for four minutes. Guys, let us know as well if you've brewed a French press or a plunger. We've got a few people excited about the French press on here. Okay, fantastic. We've actually just a plunger. Yeah, we've actually just dropped a, a YouTube video as well on the plunger with some similar tips. We go into a little bit more depth about these tips as well, so mm -hmm. make sure that you do check them out and keep an eye on the channel because we'll be going through a load of different brewing methods and some exciting content coming up towards Christmas as well. Yes. The, the silly season, as we call it, silly in Australia. It's going to get pretty silly. <laughs> yeah. How good does that smell? Oh, gosh. I feel like you could just have this, like, as a bowl of cereal. <laughs> like, I don't usually eat coffee grind, but, like, if you could, if you were to eat coffee grind. When I do. When I do eat coffee grind, this would be one of the ones that I would eat. Yeah. All righty, guys. I'm going to add my coffee to my French press. Recipe that I'm rolling with today, 18 grams, uh, and we're going to be brewing 250 mils. Now, the reason... Uh, backtracking to the base recipe of 60 grams to one liter. Now I've gone up a little bit and the reason that I've done that is because we're going to be steeping this for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Now I want to ensure that I can extract, so I'm going to try and multitask while I do this because it's going to steep for a while. Uh, I don't want to grind too fine because basically, so I've totally lost my train of thought now. <laughs> it's still early. That's my only, that's my only excuse today. Oh, it's early. No. Let me explain this. So the reason I don't want to grind too fine is because it's going to be steeping for the next three minutes. The finer you grind, the more you extract. In coffee, we're looking to extract about 18 to 22% of the soluble content. That's what coffee is. It's a soluble content. We dissolve the soluble content. So we're extracting between 18 to 22%. Now, if you to grind super fine and steep this in there for three minutes, it's going to continually try and extract and dissolve the soluble content, yeah. which is going to result in bitter, yeah. disgusting, sludgy, mudslide mocha, my mum's old coffee flavours. <laughs> so we're going to grind coarser. It's going to give us time to uh, slowly, it's going to give it a little bit more time to extract, uh, bring out a little bit of sweetness, and it's going to be absolutely delicious. Awesome. So if you are worried about the temperature of the brew, you can put the lid on, but just don't press it yet or ever. <laughs> So we're going to let that sit for three minutes. And then at three minutes, we're going to give that another stir. You're going to see that uh, the coffee particles are slowly going to drop it down. And we're going to take off this top crust where a lot of the sediment will be sitting. Um, I think we've got a quick question. Oh, yeah. I have a question. Just Salim has just chimed in and said that uh, Salim loves coffee more than his wife. Oh, I mean. Salim, <laughs> thank you, man. I'm sure I do as well. I don't have a wife. Uh, but if I had a wife, uh, I would love Coffee more as well. Is she my girlfriend is watching. Hello yeah. to my girlfriend. <laughs> She'll be all blushing yeah. now. <laughs> um, 
All right, so while this is steeping, a couple of things that we want to focus on is water quality. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest variables in coffee. Crap water, crap coffee. Crap coffee quality, crap coffee. It's very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Your brew is made up of what? Water and yeah, coffee. coffee. <laughs> so 90, 95 to 98% of your brew is water. So it's super important that we're using high quality grade water. And what do I mean by that? What is high quality grade water? Now, depending where you live, it's most likely not from the tap, unless you're from Melbourne, if you're lucky enough to live there. They have great tap water. Do you mind just tipping up? Sure. Thank you. Here in Brisbane, we actually have a high uh, uh, content of chlorine and calcium in the water, which has negative effects on our brew. Now, I'm not going to go too much into the science of water because it is quite a lengthy workshop. We will be doing a bit more of a content piece around it in the coming months, but there's a couple of things that you need to know. You want to be using filtered water that has a balance between magnesium, calcium, and black. Now, that's going to help extract our coffee evenly, give it more sweeter. We're going to get the body coming through of it uh, and extract all those flavors evenly. If you are using your tap water, so like when I brew with tap water here in Brisbane, for example, it is super bitter. It's almost chewy. It leaves like a cardboard and a papery mouthfeel on your palate. So I'm not sure if you guys have brewed with tap water at home before and you're getting these weird flavors and stringent uh, mouth coating like you're chewing cardboard or paper. It probably could be down to your water. So I recommend using filtered water. So um, what's important, we're actually using a Brita jug today. Brita jugs are pretty good. The only thing about Brita jugs is they actually strip good minerals and bad minerals out of the water and actually just lower the pH down because it's ideal for drinking. Now, you could also just use like store-bought water oh, you, don't uh, you can also just buy store-bought water if you must and what i would recommend there is actually just using like the basic brands so just like uh the home brands i'm sure most countries have home brand in australia you've got like coles yep. own brand in the uk you've got like tesco sainsbury's water in europe just the basic brands i actually find that they have a great balance of minerals and they, they don't have too many additives. You don't want to be using something like smart water, for example. I will explain all of this in a moment as well, so you know. Uh, you don't want to use something like smart water because it's got too much magnesium in it, and it's going to give you uh, an off taste of your coffee as well. It won't help extract all the right things that you want. So, moral of the story, use filtered water. Long story short, I would say. Okay, so this is brewed. I've steeped this. I've taken the top crust off as well. Um, some of you guys on IG might have seen that. That's almost like where all the sediment raises. And you'll see that all the coffee particles, I'm gonna try and move it up too much, are down the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, naturally, they have dropped. So, why not press? If you were to press now, you would push through, it would create like a whirlpool no. whirlpool like a yeah. suction a wave a wave that's the word <laughs> a wave it's early that's my excuse yeah. <laughs> a, a wave which basically would disturb the coffee bed mm -hmm. then all these coffee particles that have just sunk to the bottom will be floating around your cup you're going to kick start that extraction again and you're also going to have sediment and bitterness in there i'm just going to quickly pour this because this is still extracting as we speak so i've just left steep that for three minutes Broken the crust again, and then using the top filter to uh, filter through, so in case any coffee grounds are going to come through. But I've not pushed it down. I'm literally just using it to filter the coffee. Now, what's important here, as you can see, I'm actually pouring all of this coffee out. And the reason I'm doing this is because there's some left in here. I wouldn't want to leave this, you know, and then come back to it in another 10 minutes. Why? Excuse me, sorry. Uh, purely because uh, the coffee's still sitting in the water. And as we just learned, that's going to be continue, continuing to, to dry words. It's going to continue to try dissolve the soluble content. Mm -hmm. It's going to keep the extraction going. So that's where you are going to be left with all of that sludge, that bitterness and things like that. I think well. that's one of the main things that I see with the French press. Mm -hmm. is like people kind of let it sit on the side and they'll come back yeah. to it 20 minutes later. And that's why... 
And that's why you notice when you go to your grandma's house, the coffee gets progressively worse as the cups go on. So what I would recommend after you brew one, decant it into a server or straight into your cups as well and just just be going with it. And that way it's completely done. Mm -hmm. So all we did there was we filled it up to its beverage weight. We gave it a quick stir, which is agitation, and we let that steep for three minutes. After three minutes, I broke that crust, took off the top layer, which was almost uh, fluffy, and it was a lot of the sediment and any uh, off grind sizes there as well. Unfortunately, the hand grinder we use had a, a bit of off distribution, which will probably affect our extraction, but that's just between you and I and everybody else who's watching. <laughs> and uh, after that, we just poured it. So we're going to taste. Before we taste, I think we've got one quick question. Uh, just confirming that if we were to leave it in the French press uh, and then come back to it, we're going to have a much more bitter taste. Exactly. Yeah. You're going to have a much more bitter taste. Uh, you're going to have a mouth drying feel and really quite unpleasant and not very shareable as well. And Rashid has just said, what's up, sexy people? What's up? Thank and you, Rashid. He also said, send me one right now. So how can Rashid get this coffee? Rashid, you can buy this coffee. Follow the links. You're on Instagram, so follow the links on our on our uh, page in the link tree. We'll have a direct link to the coffee. Make sure you get that. We'll ship that ASAP. Everyone on YouTube, link in the description. This is an absolutely mind-blowing coffee. Let's taste it in the French press now. As you can see as well, team, the colour difference as well. Like it is so much more bold. I don't know if we can, I don't want to tip it all over the bench. A lot darker in color. And that's from the steeping method. So it's going to have a lot more body. Like I said, super, super flavor, uh, flavorful. Someone has just said, Ahmed has just said. Yeah, so. What has he said? You don't want to create turbulence when you press a filter. So turbulence is probably the, yeah. the word I'm looking for. Bingo, thank you, Ahmed. Spot on. <laughs> So guys, this coffee still tastes absolutely incredible, right? Yeah. I would say it's it's up there with the other two. Uh, Maddie the Barista has just said, "Will you ship to the UK?" We definitely will ship to the UK. Um, you can just follow the link in uh, the descriptions and the link tree in Instagram. Uh, you just pay online. We'll ship it early next week as soon as it's roasted from the guys at Semi Pro. Thanks again, and we'll get it to you guys as soon as possible. So you definitely can. Yeah. It is. Freaking mind blowing. Yeah, Even with the French press, like this yeah. is like the body. It's tangy. It's, you know, coating the sides of my palate, but it's got a balanced acidity. And this chocolate literally shoots up the direct mm. middle of my mouth to the back of mm. um, my mouth. Straight up the middle of the tongue. Yeah. Straight up. I feel like I'm eating a chocolate bar yeah. that's got literally like raspberries, chunk, raspberry chunks <laughs> like in it. Mm. And what else has it got in there? It's got like apricot, yeah. it's juicy, Peach. peachy, mm. raspberry, sparkly. Guys, it's a must try. I really want you to get your hands on it. So if you do have the chance, make sure you jump online and grab that. All righty. Cool. We're going to start cold brew, hey? Yeah. Um, so now's probably a good time. If any of you have any questions you've been kind of hanging on or dying to ask throughout the segment now's probably a good time to ask them if you're on instagram obviously ask them there youtube ask them on here um we'll try and i mean we'll see if we can answer them throughout but otherwise we'll have a little q a sec section afterwards so kind of now it's <laughs> we actually had uh someone before ask what it tastes like this cold brew and i mentioned that's fantastic nice. we're about yeah. to brew it we're going to show you guys how to brew it do we have ice yeah, we have ice. Can we get some ice, I reckon. Yeah. We, um, we're going to taste it. We brewed one earlier, so we could taste it, and then we're going to show you some tips as well. So making this cold brew at home, uh, I wanted to show you guys how to make uh, cafe-style quality cold brew at home without having, like, maybe all the tools. So all you're going to need is coffee, filtered water, and, like, a Tupperware container. Just something like this. This is what we're going to brew into today. Um, a tape. A, a tape. A tape. A piece of tape. Masking tape. Masking tape. tape. And a pen just to make sure we can write all of that on there as well. So like I said, we did prepare one earlier so we can also taste it. So I might decant that first. Oh, thanks. Man. I might decant that first, Hey. Mm -hmm. um, if you could maybe prep your glasses, we'll make some ice and we've got some slices over there as well. So this is one that we, we prepared earlier yesterday. So I brewed this yesterday afternoon. So I'm actually just going to filter this now. Mm 
I have just made a mistake on live as well. What I should have done to make it even better, I should have just pre-rinsed my uh, filter paper quickly as well. So all I've done here is we've got the steep coffee and I'm just passing this through a filter to make sure I can uh, filter out the sediment, the grinds, and uh, basically just have our cold brew ready to go. In this, you can filter this through a V60 like I'm doing. The cafes, we used to filter it through a different filter as well. There's other ways you could do it. You can actually buy like, um, like uh, uh, kind of like sashes, like bags that you can wrap up basically. Uh, I want to say, uh, I don't know the, what the material's out of. But basically, I want to say Hessian, but it's not, I know for a fact it's not a Hessian bag. Basically, it's like a tea bag. So you're not going to impart any of the bag flavor into your brew. You put your coffee into that bag and you steep it in the water. Then that way you can just take the bag out, wring it out a little bit, um, and then dispose of the filter. That's also a great way if you've got one of those. If not, just the uh, filter paper through a V60 is fine as well. So that's just going to drip through. While that finishes dripping through, we are going to prep the cold brew. So cold brew is just such a fantastic way to enjoy coffee at home, especially coming up into the summer. It's mm. always hot here in Brisbane. Yep. I think it's like 30 degrees nearly already, and it's like oh. 6 o'clock in the morning. Know, <laughs> so this cold brew is going to go down like an absolute treat. Mm. It uh, is super easy to make as well. It's great for parties, mm. uh, great for cocktails as well, if you want to make a bit more of a concentrated recipe. Super simple. So first thing that we're going to do is just get a clean container. Oh, that was cool. A clean container. Uh, we have just chucked this through the dishwasher uh, at a high heat so we make sure we sanitized it. And no funny smells, no old milk or anything in there, obviously, because that's going to impart the flavor. Yeah. What I'm then going to do is just tear my scales. I'm going to get my ground coffee. We are just going to make 500 mils, so we're going 30 grams of coffee. So that's back to the same base recipe. 60 grams of coffee to one liter of water with ground coarse. Now it's really, 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 really important that you grind coarse because this is gonna be a long extraction. We're gonna use room temperature filtered water. Bear with me, I'll explain why, not hot water. And we're gonna use uh, coarsely ground coffee and we're gonna steep this for about 12 to 16 hours, depending on how you like your brews. This one, I think we brewed for about 14 hours um, and I think it's gonna taste absolutely banging. Now, the reason we want to use cold water or room temperature water, sorry, not cold water, is because we want to have a slower extraction. If you use hot water, as you know, 92 to 96 post, you know, whatever temperature up to 99 degrees, you're going to extract and dissolve the soluble content quicker, right? It's like you take sugar or salt, you put it in a cup, then use hot water to dissolve it. You don't use cold water to dissolve yeah. it. It dissolves quicker uh, with less agitation with hot water. So we want to make sure that we're going to use room temperature water that is then going to uh, steep for 12 to 16 hours outside of the fridge. Now, the reason I say outside of the fridge is because the similar temperature thing. So if you put it into the fridge overnight, you're lowering that temperature even lower, which is then going to slow that extraction down even more. Now, I'm not saying you couldn't do that. You could definitely do that and just brew it for a bit longer, like 24 hours or even longer, and you might get a super delicious brew, you know, but I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> I don't have all day. I just want a quick overnight brew, something I put on the, in the afternoon, something I can take to work in the morning, and it's super easy and super good to go. So room temperature water, we're going to keep it out of the sun as well. So first thing, got our ground coffee. As I mentioned, grind fresh. We've just ground this like a couple minutes before. 60, uh, 30 grams, sorry, to 500 mils of water, just into the Tupperware container, like so. Oh, thank you. Uh, tear your scale and get your filtered water. And then we're just gonna pour 500 mils, or if you're making a liter, one liter. Now I'm just trying to coat all the coffee evenly, of course. This even smells already just mm. absolutely incredible. Uh, a little bit more. That's up at 500 mils. Now I'm just going to give this a quick stir just to make sure that all of the coffee grounds have been coated evenly. Not too much of a stir because I don't want to uh, I don't want to kickstart the extraction too much. I don't want to agitate the coffee too much. I've got a few questions. All right. Um, so would a vacuum container help? keeping the fr freshness of the ground coffee and would you recommend keeping it in a fridge or freeze or fridge? So 
as we said. Just for storage of coffee. Yeah, yeah. just for storage of coffee, definitely. Um, actually, you're a bit me too, but perfect point. We're actually lucky enough to have an Ancom. They've released a vacuum seal storage container, which is absolutely fantastic, uh, which doesn't help, uh, doesn't let the coffee oxidize. Yeah. Uh, if you have a bag that has a resealable uh, lip, they're also good. However, they do have a one-way valve that actually uh, isn't exactly one way. Uh, we discovered that, uh, yes, it lets the CO2 out of the bag and degasses the coffee, but it's actually letting small amounts of oxygen in the bag as yeah. well. So I would say, if possible, in the bag, if you can get one of these like vacuum seal storage containers, fantastic. I wouldn't recommend putting it in the fridge purely because you would be changing the moisture content by bringing it in and out of the mm -hmm. fridge every time you brew. Freezer, different story. Uh, I know it's quite common to freeze coffees. I've definitely frozen coffees over time, especially like things like this, like ultra rare lots, like one in a lifetime million, like that little plug as well. Uh, I would keep that in the freezer, but I would actually portion it into like my 16 mm -hmm. to 18 gram portions and just pull that portion out. What I do find when I do freeze coffee, I lose a little bit of body, but I do get a cleaner and a sweeter brew. And it's important if you do use frozen coffee uh, that you grind it fresh as well to make sure that you're going to get the best out of its flavor. So I would recommend storing coffee in a vacuum seal, in its original bag, even a Tupperware container like this in the cupboard, yeah. out of direct sunlight, away from bananas or anything like that. No one likes bananas. <laughs> I might add. I love them. No one yeah. likes bananas because it will impart uh, flavor onto that as yeah. well. So we want yeah. to keep it away from direct sunlight, mm -hmm. any unnatural lights as well. So yeah, these are really good. We're hopefully going to list these on our website shortly. Yes. So back to the cold brew. So I put my water in there, my coffee steeping. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna write on this because I have chicken school handwriting. Felicity is gonna do me a favor and write on this. So Fliss, if you yeah. could please write um, today, like mm -hmm. Sunday, not today. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sunday, the 1st of November. Yeah. And then we're gonna write the coffee name. So we can just write Al Sal, which is short for Al Salvador. And we're gonna write the time that we put the brew on. So we put that on 5.55 a.m. Okay. So we're going to write that on there. Um, the reason that we're going to do that is, I, I will show you this one after, is so we can track the time. Oh, ah, that's what I was going to say. You probably can't read it because of my disgusting handwriting. But just so we can track it, so I know that when I leave this on the bench, I come back to it the next morning, I know what time I put it on. Uh, you know, if my partner has put the coffee on, uh, for example, you know, I can come back and know that, what, what the brew is or what time it was put on so we know when to decant it, which is fantastic. So we're now going to steep that. We're just going to let that sit. Beautiful, Henry. Sunday, 1st of November, our cell, 5.55 a.m. Beautiful. So I'm just going to put this to the side. We can just, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it here. <laughs> and we are out of the shot. <laughs> And we're just going to let that sit on that bench uh, overnight for the next 12 to 16 hours. And then we're going to do the process that we just did. So I've decanted it. It's just straight through the V60, this one. We're just going to dispose of that filter paper as well. And V60, changer. Thank yes. you. So we've got our cold brew concentrate. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I think we've got a quick question. Oh, that sounds amazing. How syrupy does that smell? Yeah. Fantastic. So for the oh. viewers, super syrupy, super it juicy. Like honey to me. Yeah. I, I get a lot of honey. Mm. Very of sweet. Sweetness, yeah. So what we've done is we've prepared some glasses with ice. Cold is always brewed. Uh, sorry, served beautifully over ice. Um, what we've also done, just to spice it up a little bit, because it is the summer, it's a little yeah. bit fun. We've actually got some orange and lime slices as well. Now Totally up to you if you want to add these to the coffee or not. They will change a little bit of the flavor. So I'm going to try mine with it and then without, or without and then with, obviously, as well. Uh, but, of course, like if you've got a party or whatever you've got, these are a great addition as well. So I think we'll have a quick sip, guys, without it. And then we'll just add a little spice in there as well. Oh, look how clean that looks. So, viewers, look how clean, silky, almost tea-like that this looks. Looks like summer. Obviously, this is from the slow extraction process. So the room temperature water, uh, extracting for 16 hours. It's, you know, breaking that soluble content down. It's going to be absolutely – these guys are saying it's mind blowing. Yeah. <laughs> Matty the barista just said, El Sal on the rocks. El Sal on the rocks. Yes, ma'am, I'll have one El Sal on the rocks, please. 
Mm. Um, just a question from Kate Ivana again, uh, just in regards to the cold brew. So just confirming we don't touch it for 12 to 16 hours. Yes. Yeah, definitely. In, in, in the recipes that I've tried to get uh, something that's super easy and consistent every time, I just leave it. By all means, feel free to come back to it halfway through. Give it another stir. Make sure that those coffee grounds are moving around again. I'm sure you'll enhance the extraction and probably boost that process a little bit more. You might even get a little bit more out of it. However, also leaving it like this is just incredible. That's amazing. This is silky. Shop, it's silky. Cheers, guys. Cheers. It's yeah. silky. It's smooth. It's like, like so um, tingly and bubbly and soft on my palate. I've also got um, on, over on our YouTube, so Sam said he's a big fan of decanting cold brew into a Chemex um, as the thicker paper yep. gives a really light concentrate. So that's a cool tip. Definitely. Yeah, yeah that's a really great tip. What was, it, what was his name? Sorry. Sam. Sam. Yeah, good tip, Sam. As Sam just me mentioned, the filter papers on a Chemex are a lot thicker. Mm -hmm. uh, so it will take a little bit more time to obviously drip through that filter paper, but you will filter even more sediment out as well. So that's a great idea. So it tastes with a little bit of orange now as well. Would you squeeze, Alex, or you just drop it in? I actually just dropped this in, but you could squeeze it as well. If you want to get really posh, Maddie the barista probably knows because she wants outside on the rocks. <laughs> even brush the even brush the glass oh, with yeah. a bit of lime or something like, like that. Cocktail. Someone said they're feeling jealous. They can almost smell the coffee. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you should. It, ah, you want orange? Oh my god! Oh, you got lime. Yeah. I want to try it with lime as well. Nice. Sorry, guys. I feel like we're just having the party. We get to taste everything and. Oh, you get the you get the citrus on the nose as you bring yeah. it to your. Oh, that's also the same. As you, as you bring the coffee up, you get the citrus. <laughs> it's to like pass the parcel over here. So yeah, guys. Like I said, this coffee is Ooh. absolutely mind blowing. It's cold brew. It's so silky smooth. It doesn't even feel like you're drinking coffee. You could just no, be doesn't. pounding those all day. Oh, yeah. It's quite dangerous, really. Um, I got a shout out. Guy behind the camera. You cool. Much appreciated. Oh, I saw you on the camera. Hey guys. Don't need to boost his ego. <laughs> mate. Thank you, though. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up uh, in terms of our brewing tips, things like that. I'm sure we could probably move on to some some questions. If we've got some more questions, yeah. we'd love to answer them. But I just before we do that, I just want to mention this coffee one more time. I know I've been banging on about it so much, but it is honestly one of the best coffees I've ever tasted in my entire life. Every single brewing method that we've tried, it has been so complex, so volatile. Uh, mm -hmm. It's juicy. It's chocolate, creme de cacao, uh, apricot, plum, peach. I just cannot... I can't even convey it enough to you guys of how good it is. It is worth it. We've only got 100 bags, 99 bags, well, 100 bags, sorry. It's going fast. So please, I really, really, really hope you guys can get uh, a bag of it and get Definitely. into it. Yeah. Um, before we finish up, I think we'll jump into a couple of questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we've, I think we've worked through all the ones on YouTube. We've got a few here. Yeah. Uh, someone earlier in the uh, live stream said, can you talk to us a little bit about your pain? paper options when it comes to things like v60 and stuff like that what are your thoughts on that yeah so i would definitely recommend using all the hario branded filter papers for excuse me sorry uh for v60 i find that they're the best uh i actually find the bleach the oxygen bleached uh version better than the naturals i think they're quite similar i think there's been quite a lot of debate in the past that the oxygen bleached versus the natural filter papers run at different uh paces mm -hmm. i would prefer to go with the oxygen bleached um i think it's super clean there's no bleach that i can taste it's definitely not uh, a health thing as well uh there's also like reusables there's metals there's cotton there's things like that which are fantastic for the environment yeah. uh the good thing about the filter papers they are biodegradable and recyclable so they're also good for the environment and you get better coffee um don has said have you tried ecuadorian coffee any thoughts i have don <laughs> man wow <laughs> wow <laughs> no it is that ecuadorian coffee is amazing i've only actually had i think two uh coffees from ecuador and both of them were absolutely incredible had a nice earthiness to them but more importantly they were so chocolatey mm -hmm. so subtle so delicious so big shout out to the guys doing in ecuador as well um and indonesian coffee was another one have you tried indonesian i have coffee? tried indonesian actually in australia i think indonesian coffee is quite popular we actually had um, an interesting Indonesian coffee uh, from Community Roasters down uh, just south of Queensland uh, a couple of months ago, which was actually an experimental natural process too. And that had a really interesting um, – oh, someone's just said that it comes from India. Yeah. Sorry. I had a really in, uh, interesting complexity 
uh, which I super, super enjoyed as well. So I would also say that, yeah, Indian coffee is great and they're very popular in Australia because obviously we're quite close yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, will we save this video on Instagram TV? We definitely will save this video on Instagram TV. So you can go back, you can backtrack, uh, backtrack and tips, uh, mm -hmm. the recipes that we use as well, especially once you guys purchase this incredible coffee, you can try out the recipes that we've used. As I said, uh, we'll do a quick video uh, later this week uh, about the recipes that we've used mm -hmm. and we'll share them with you guys as well so you can obviously try them out. If you do need more tips, please check out our YouTube because we do have these videos. We've got uh, uh, V60 AeroPress and French Press Live at the moment and they go into a little bit more depth about some of the techniques that we did show yeah. you guys today. Yeah. More questions? Um, oh, Maddie just said if you put an umbrella in that, you'll be laughing. I will be. Uh -huh. Um, a lot of people have been writing it down. They said, thank you, uh, you're awesome. What's the best way to extract espresso without a machine? Interesting. Uh, tough question. Uh, if you can get your hands on, like there's a few devices out there now that do like all in one pourers. So like the Wakakos, I think they're made in Hong Kong or Singapore. Please forgive me, I, I'm not entirely sure. The Wakako Minis, uh, they actually uh, are like a small... Uh, they're on our website as well, so you can check them out. They're like a small little travel device, you put ground coffee in them, hot water on the top, and there's a piston pump on the side that you pump and then push, and it gives great quality espresso. It actually builds the pressure through the piston pump up to, I think, 18 or 19 bar, uh, which is very, very impressive. So you do get lovely crema, uh, creamy espresso as well. Otherwise, you can muck around with using an AeroPress. You're obviously not going to get the same concentrate and it's not going to be pressurized. You're not going to have crema. Uh, there's a few attachments that you could buy for it, but without the attachments, you could find uh, try grinding finer and uh, a shorter amount of water, uh, a higher agitation, um, and a quicker uh, push through as well. We, we've experimented with that. I think we actually have a video about that coming out soon yeah. too and mucking around with uh, making flat whites just with the French press um, mm. and baking foamy milk as well. Yes. So that is also a great way to try and make espresso. There's a few other things that you can invest in, like little handheld travel devices as well. Mm. Um, I would probably say that the Wakako is definitely the best. Uh, there's a mini version, there's a large version, and I think it gives the most consistent as well. I'm just going to try this cold brew again. <laughs> Any other questions? Mm. Um, no, just people making sure that it's going to be available afterwards. Alrighty. Yeah. Um, Ken, can you just flip the paper? Yeah. Um, we're just quickly working on to see why we can't ship to India. We definitely should be able yeah. to ship to India. That's well, correct, Cameron. We can definitely do global out. shipping. Yeah. We ship internationally. Uh, Chef, if you would like to send us a DM on Instagram so we can contact you directly in case we do have any other issues because I really want to make sure that you can get a bag of this juicy, delicious boy. So if you want to shoot us a DM on Instagram uh, directly or even drop us an email at hello at baristamentor.com.au, we will solve those issues to make sure we can get them to you guys. Uh, so that pretty much, uh, unfortunately, wraps it up. Um, yes. Thank you, everybody, for listening to me waffle on and talk about <laughs> coffee for the past hour. I really, really hope you guys did learn something and I hope that we can impart any knowledge uh you know, that we've learned over the years to help you guys brew some better coffee at home. I did just want to remind you that uh, links to our YouTube and Instagram are obviously in the descriptions and in our link trees. It would mean uh, the absolute world to us if you could give us a thumbs up and a follow. Uh, we really want to make this a full-time gig as much as possible, working on quite some exciting things in the background as well. A lot of exciting stuff coming up. So the more you guys follow us along on our journey, uh, give us a thumbs up. Hopefully the, the more we can give to you guys and the more content that we can put out. So if, if you do have a moment, that would be absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you could give us a subscribe, it would mean the world to us as well. Uh, one more time, the coffee is available on our website, only 100 bags. We are sending out this ultra-rare lot that's completely exclusive to us uh, and Semipro specifically for this event. Mm -hmm. So please, please, please get on it if you get the chance. I don't want you to miss out. And, and I just want to give a big thank you to Jason, Tim, and James once more from the guys at Semipro. They are absolutely fantastic and super supportive, uh, absolute legends, and they know how to grow fantastic coffee. Uh, so a big thanks to them. And, of course, a big, big, big thank you to the Global Coffee Festival and the Global Coffee, Global coffee Fringe Festival for letting us be a part of such an incredible event. Such a great concept, such a great idea, and we've been uh, absolutely thrilled to be a part of it, yeah. and we are really, really loving it. 
And most importantly, thanks to everyone watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks Thank you for everyone. your questions. Thanks for the extra tips as well. We're still learning. Everyone's learning. Yeah. Uh, so we really hope you can uh, continue to join us on this this journey. There are a lot of people saying thank you. Some people sending you banana emojis. Oh, they know I hate bananas. <laughs> bananas are disgusting. Don't send me bananas. I swear to God, if I ever get bananas sent to my house. And maybe we'll, uh, if people have enjoyed this, maybe we'll jump on a live more regularly, uh, particularly yeah. on our Instagram yeah. as well. If it's, yeah, if this is something you would like to see more often, give us a thumbs up, give us a wave, send us a message as well. Uh, we'll try and, you know, taste some of our coffees at home uh, on a more regular basis on live as well. Totally. We've uh, had some unconfused by your accent, Alex. They've said, where in the UK are you guys? Yeah, interesting. Uh, so we're actually in Australia um, from Brisbane. Um, I've just spent the last uh, four years, uh, a little bit more living and working in the UK and all my friends are English. So I've picked up a bit of a weird twang, yeah. half Australian, half English, but we are based in Brisbane, in Australia, definitely Australian. I know I sound a little bit British, but definitely Australian. <laughs> People have asked for more sessions, please. Um, and also again, Kay Kavana said, I give you all the bananas. No more bananas, Kay Kavana. <laughs> all right, guys, I think that pretty much, uh, racks, rack, racks, racks it up, wraps it up for us all. Uh, we'll make sure we go live a bit more often as well and excited for everyone to join us on this journey. Thank you so much. A big goodbye from us all here in Brisbane. Love to you all. Thank you. Bye.